So Ramadan came and Ramadan went and Ramadan came and Ramadan went and every Ramadan Jibreel would come to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and ask him to recite the Quran or the Hadith says teach him the Quran and the Rasul used to be in I'tikaf so for the 10 days Jibreel would cover the whole Quran with him and then came the 23rd Ramadan this is on the 10th year after Hijrah in this Ramadan something different happened the Rasul salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi went into I'tikaf Jibreel came, recited the Quran, taught him the Quran cover to cover in the 10 days. And then he saw a dream that what you're seeking is ahead of you. Extend your i'tikaf. So the Rasul extended the i'tikaf by 10 days. And in the dream he had seen, his forehead was on the ground, he lifted it, and the soil and water was dripping down the blessed face. And he extended the atikaf and the rain came. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lifted his forehead from the sujood. And the soil of the earth and the water ran down his face as it was in the dream. And then in this 10 days, Jibreel recited the Quran again and made the Prophet recite it or taught him the Quran again. And this made the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam think, why twice this year? And the Prophet is the most learned of the servants of Allah about Allah Rabbul Izzah. As such when the Zul Arsh al-Majid and Fa'alul Lima Yurid gives a hint, the one to understand it most is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Almost like you're trying to solve something, you go, ah. Oh. And in his heart of hearts, he understood it. It is the extra caution of the heavens to ensure that the correct message has been delivered and the correct message is left behind. And it means that perhaps my time has come to an end and I might be departing eminently. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't utter a word about this to anyone. After Ramadan is the month of Shawwal. Around this time he sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal go to Yemen and teach the people their religion. And they say he was walking with Mu'ad and Mu'ad was on the mount on his right and the Rasul is walking next to him and then towards the end of this war he says oh Mu'ad it might be that you will not see me after this again so they say Mu'ad فَبَكَى Mu'ad and Mu'ad wept but he says the order of the messenger has come for me to go to Yemen I will go I might and see my Rasul after and this was the first hint he gave to one of the Ummah and then after Shawwal came the Qa'dah, the messengers were sent out. Make the proclamation that the Rasul is going to Hajj this year. You must understand the peninsula has become Muslim, but not seen their Prophet, not talked to their Prophet, not sat with their Prophet. Now is an opportunity, an excuse to go with the Rasul on this blessed journey to Hajj. So people flocked into Medina. The scholars say a hundred thousand came. And then four days left from Zul Qada, the Rasul marches out. It's a Saturday. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam prayed Zuhur and he marched out to Zul Hulayfa. He stayed in Zul Hulayfa the night and in the morning after Zuhur put on his ihram and started to move towards Hajj. And Jabir ibn Abdullah says, I looked so far as my eyes could see. There were people either walking or riding, almost a gift of Allah Rabbul Izzah. Do you remember when they used to torture you? Do you remember when they used to pelt you with stones? Today, look, look at the fruits of your toils, O Muhammad. Your religion has reigned supreme. Allah Rabbul Izzah has brought about justice on the tongue of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in the Sunnah that he left. So he came out to Hajj and in this Hajj, it is the first hint he gives the Ummah. He says, O oh Muslims, take 
the rituals of Hajj from me, for I don't know if I will be with you here ever again. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed the Hajj and in the day of Arafat called the Muslims and they gathered and then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out to give them his farewell speech. And what a speech it is. Verily, O Muslims, Muslims, your blood, Muslims, your blood, Muslims, your blood, your wealth, your honor is sacred like the sacredness of this day and this month and in this land. All the bloods of the Jahiliyyah are under my feet today abrogated. We will not revenge, nor will we avenge, nor do we seek retaliation. We have forgiven it. Islam has reigned supreme. And then he says, all the usury and all the riba of the days of the Jahiliyyah are beneath my feet today. And the first riba that I abrogate and cancel is that of my uncle Abbas. O Muslims, be good to your women. Because you took them on the word of Allah Rabbul Izza and the, Allah made them halal for you through his word. So honor the word of Allah Rabbul Izza with regards to your women. I have left amidst you something that if you hold on to it, you won't ever go astray. The book of Allah Rabbul Izza and the lineage of the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You will be asked with regards to me in front of Allah Rabbul Izzah, what will you say that day? And the Ummah is sitting at this stage, 144,000 are sitting in front of him. We will say that you conveyed the message. We will say that you advised the Ummah. We will say that you gave the revelation. So then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked up towards the heavens and says, Allahumma fashhad, Allahumma fashhad. Allahumma fashhad, O oh Allah, bear witness that I have conveyed the message. O oh Allah, bear witness that I have given the advice. O oh Allah, bear witness that I have completed the religion. And as he utters the words, Jibreel comes with the verses, Today the religion has been perfected, and I have manifested my favors upon you. In Islam, I have chosen as a religion for you. And then the next day came the day of Yawm al-Nahr. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up again to speak and gave almost the same speech again. And towards the end of it, Jibreel came when the divine aid came in victory. And you saw mankind enter the religion in multitudes. So glorify the praise of your Lord and atone and repent and make istighfar. For Allah Rabbul Izzah is oft forgiving, most merciful. As he hears the verses, he tells Jibreel, he says, it is as though my Lord is giving me my own condolences. The well-mannered Jibreel says, O oh Prophet, the Akhirah is better for you than here. The month of Hajj finished. The month of Muharram was normal. After that, on the early days of Safar, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the Mount of Uhud and he made dua for them. And they say the dua was like a farewell both for them and for the living. Towards the 28th night or 27th of Safar, called Abu Muwayhiba. Ya Abu Muwayhiba, Allah has ordered me to seek forgiveness for the people in the graveyard of the Baqi. So come with me. So Abu Muwayhiba said, I went with him middle of the night. Greetings to you, O oh, dwellers of the graves. And then he says, glad tidings to you and what you are in compared to what the people outside are in. Calamities are about to be unleashed. Like a chunk of the dark night, one will follow the other. The last will be worse than the beginning. O oh, Abu Muwayhiba, Allah Rabbul Izza gave me the choice to live in this world or to meet my Lord and go to Jannah. So Abu Muwayhiba says, by my mom and dad be sacrificed for you, O Prophet. Choose the dunya, choose to stay here, stay with us. See your ummah flourish, see your Im ummah grow, guide your ummah and then go to Jannah towards the end. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I chose the meeting and the appointment of my Lord instead. And then he says, he went home. The next day, there's a funeral. And he goes, he followed the funeral procession. And then as soon as he came back from it, his head started to ache and fever started to grip him. And they say fever so intense that you would put your hand on his turban and feel the heat from outside the turban. 
So he's in the house of Maymuna radiallahu anha when the sickness started. For 14 days he is sick. So he leaves and he goes to the house of Aisha and when he enters she says, Oh my head. So the Prophet says, Oh Aisha, no, my head is the one that is hurting. In that sickness, he would still attend the salah and lead the salah. He would still counsel, he would still advise, he would still visit his wives, he would still judge. And every day he used to say, where am I tomorrow? So they said, be wherever you want to Prophet wasallam. So he said, if you permit, I want to be in the house of Aisha. So Bilal gave the adhan for the salah to start. And the Prophet wasallam said, pour water on me. So they poured water on him and he got up and he fainted. And then people are waiting that the Rasul will come. So then after a while he gained consciousness. So he said, have they prayed? They said, no, how will they pray? They're waiting for the Imam, for the Rasul to come. So he said, put water on me. So they put water on him again. And then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up to pray, then fell down again and fainted. And then again, and then he said, order Abu Bakr to lead the Salah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cannot lead the Salah anymore after this. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for water to be brought from seven different wells. And then he tied his head and he said, take me, I need to speak to the people. So they went and they set him on the member. And this is the last time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has sat on the member. And then he says, Allah cursed the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as a place of worship. Don't take my grave as an object of worship after me. Whoever from you that I have hit with a whip, then here is my back. Take your qasas from me now instead of in the court of Allah Rabbul Izzah. Whoever I have taken in a wealth from you, ask for your wealth back so I can return it. Don't ask it of me in the day of judgment. Whoever I have dishonored or defamed, he is my honor. Take your qasas from me now. So one person stood up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, you owe me three dirhams. So he said, pay him his dirhams and his family repaid his dirhams. Then the Salat of Zuhr came. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed and then came back on the member. And then sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said again, whoever I have wronged, come and take your wrong from me now. Whoever I have struck, come and strike me back. Whoever I have taken their wealth, come he is my wealth take it whoever I have defamed or dishonored he is my honor come and take and then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah Rabbul Izza gave a servant the choice between this dunya and eternity in it or the meeting of his Lord the servant chose the meeting of his Lord and he doesn't say me he says a servant so Abu Bakr is sitting there and he starts to cry. People are wondering why is Abu Bakr crying in the middle of all this? And he says, may our mothers and fathers be sacrificed for you, O Prophet. O Prophet, we will sacrifice our households for you. And the Prophet says, sit ya Abu Bakr. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, let all the doors into the masjid be closed except for the door of Abu Bakr. And then he says, the person that I am indebted to the most from his wealth and his companionship is Abu Bakr. In another hadith, whoever we owed anything, we repaid except for the debt of Abu Bakr. The debt of Abu Bakr, we leave to Allah Rabbul Izzah to repay. And now he says, if I were to choose a friend except for the Zul Arsh al Majid, I would have chosen Abu Bakr as a friend. And for him, the companionship of Islam is sufficient. People were wondering, why is Abu Bakr crying in the middle of all this? Two days before, his death and this is a Saturday the Prophet Sallallahu felt rejuvenated revived strong the Muslims are standing in Salah in the Zuhr and they're praying and then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to join the Salah so the Ashab carried him there was a commotion in the Masjid the Rasul has entered and Abu Bakr realized that maybe the Prophet ﷺ is here. So he stepped back and the Rasul placed his hands on him. He pushed him back forward and he sat on the left side of Abu Bakr. So he would pray with isharat and with his head. And Abu Bakr anhu would take up the moves and then the Muslims would follow Abu Bakr anhu. And Sunday, he wasallam released all his servants. And he had seven dinars at home. He said, Aisha, give this in sadaqah. 
And when he used to faint, he used to wake back up. Did you give the seven dinar and sadaqah? She said, no, we were busy with your sickness. He said, give the seven dinar and sadaqah, ya Aisha. And then again, he fainted when he came around. Have you given the seven dinars and sadaqah? How will I stand before Allah, Rabbul Izza, and in my house is seven dinars? Give it in sadaqah, ya Aisha. She radiallahu anha gave it in sadaqah. And this is Sunday night now. At night, she didn't have money to burn oil in the lamp. So she borrowed it from her neighbor. And then comes Monday morning and the masjid is full to the brim with the people praying. As the people have entered the masjid, he feels a sense of strength. So he opened the curtain, the face of the Prophet wasallam, looking into the masjid. So the Ashab say, we almost lost our salah. And then the Ashab came to him, you're looking good. Abu Bakr came, oh Prophet, you're looking strong, Alhamdulillah. So this is after Salat Al-Fajr. And then the Prophet Sallallahu fell unconscious again. And Aisha Radiallahu Anha says, his head was on my chest. He was going into consciousness and out of consciousness. He looked up towards the ceiling. And then he said, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la. And Aisha said, I remember. He had said that all prophets are given the choice to choose the eternity in this world or the meeting of their Lord. And as he uttered it, I realized he has made his choice. The fever had run sky high and there was a bowl of water. He used to put his hand into it and rub it on his forehead. And he used to say, La ilaha illallah, death has its pangs. In this situation, his daughter Fatima al Zahra entered. He sat her next to him and summoned her, beckoned her, come. So she came near and he whispered in her ear and she held her face and sobbed. She cried bitterly and then, seeing her situation, he called her again, come. So she came again. He whispered something else into her ear. Aisha asked her later on, what did he say? He said, first, he said, that Jibreel made me recite the Quran twice this year. It feels like the Ajal is close. You will be the first of my family to join me. So I cried. And then he said, aren't you pleased to be the queen of the Muslim women of Jannah? So she said, I laughed. Looking at his situation, she says, oh, the calamity on my father. So the Prophet wasallam said, after today, there won't be any more calamities on your father. And in this situation, Abdul Rahman, the son of Abu Bakr, entered the room. And with him is a siwak. He looked at the siwak longingly. In his head, I am going to the majesty of the ones most high. Let me siwak. So Aisha said, I noticed him looking at it. So I said, do you want it, O Prophet? And he nodded, yes. So I took it and I softened it with my own mouth and my own saliva. And then I cleaned his teeth with it. And then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, placing his hand in the water, rubbed it on his face. And he said, La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawti sakarat. He looked up as though he saw something and he says, Allahumma rafiq al-a'la. Aisha says, I quickly made dua, the recitations to rub on him, to say, oh Allah, cure him. He said, no, but ask Allah to give me the companionship of the ones most high. So then, in this situation, and the hand trying to put water on its face, the hand fell. And Aisha radiallahu anha realized, Prophet Sallallahu has passed away. The room became filled with fragrance. The cry, the heart ache. Hafsa Radiallahu Anha sends for her father Umar ibn al-Khattab. Aisha sends for her father Abu Bakr al-Siddiq who is a kilometer and a half away. So the first one to enter the room after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Umar Radiallahu Anha. Aisha says he knocked and asked permission because it's the house of Aisha. She says, I gave him permission and look at the detail and pulled my hijab over me. And Umar came with Mughira, Mughira ibn Shu'bah. And he said, oh, so unconscious, so deeply unconscious. 
And then he stood up and tried to come out of the house. And Mughira said, Ya Umar, he is not faint, he has died. So he said, you are lying. You're a person that fitna has engulfed. The Prophet won't die. He has gone to his Lord and will return as Musa returned. He can't accept the death of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, the Prophet hasn't died and he's shouting in the middle of the masjid. In the middle of this commotion and the people have gathered around him. They don't know what's happening. Umar, one of the greatest of the ummah is shouting. He hasn't died. And the news is coming from the house. He has died. So Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib stood up. Oh people, is, th is there anyone who has heard anything from the Prophet to the effect that I won't die? And they said no. And Umar said no. So then the, uh, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib said, I make you witnesses over yourselves that Allah Rabbul Izzah, no the Prophet has given any guarantee that he will live forever as such the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has died. This was the first utterance that it came. And then Abu Bakr al-Siddiq came. Radiyallahu anka ya Abu Bakr. He came from Sunh and he entered the room of his daughter. And the other wives who were sitting there covered. And then he went and the Prophet is lying. Salawat Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. His face glowing bright. So he removed the cover from it. He radiallahu anhu leant over and kissed the blessed forehead of the Rasul. And then looking up towards the heavens he said, Oh my dear friend. And then he leant down and kissed him again. And then he said, Wa Safiya. Oh, the chosen one. And then he kissed him again. And then this time leant over and kissed him. And he said, Wa Rasula. Oh, my prophet. Oh, Rasul. And then he says, The death that Allah Rabbul Izzah prescribed upon you, you have tasted it. Allah won't let you taste this twice. Death twice. And what the son of Khattab says is nothing. And then he, radiallahu anhu, walked out of this room and Umar is still shouting so he said sit O Umar and Umar ibn al-Khattab is still shouting and then he gives his timeless words to the Ummah whoever was worshipping Muhammad understand that Muhammad has died but for those of you who are worshipping Allah understand Allah Rabbul Izzah is eternal and doesn't die and then he read وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ Prophets have come before him, prophets have died before him. If he dies or is killed, will you forsake the deen? Will you turn back on your heels? And then Umar says, it's, it's as though I had never heard the verse and hearing it he felt. The truth sank. The Prophet wasallam passed away. And in one of the hadith, he says, Is this in the Quran, Ya Abu Bakr? And Abu Bakr says, Naam. And your Prophet wasallam passed away on Monday. At the age of 63, on the 12th of Rabi'ul Awwal.